Thank you. Uh, is my mic okay? Work okay. Cool. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Xin Yu Wang. I'm a final year PhD student uh, from UT Austin. So today I'm going to present uh, relational program synthesis, um, and this is a joint work with Yue Peng Wang and Nisho Dilig. All right, so uh, first of all, from a very high level, my talk today is about program synthesis, where the goal is to uh, generate a program automatically that satisfies a given specification. And as you may already know, this is a very hot topic in recent years that has many real-world applications. For instance, <clears throat> synthesis has been used to automatically, automatically uh, uh, to, to automate data wrangling tasks, to automatically generate SQL queries, and so on. And However, existing synthesis techniques focus on synthesizing one single program at a time. And in this work, we formalize and study a new class of synthesis problems, which we call relational program synthesis, that also has many real-world applications. And in contrast to existing synthesis problems, in this problem, we are interested in synthesizing multiple programs that collectively satisfy a so-called relational specification. All right, so what, what do I mean by relational specification? Well, a relational specification is a specification that relates multiple programs or different executions of the same program. For instance, a relational specification can specify the, uh, the property that any, uh, any value pair of encoder and decoder implementations should always be inverse of each other. It could also be used to express the uh, transitivity property of any correct implementation of a comparator. So note that here, although in this specification, it, it only talks about one single program, this is still a relational specification because it talks about multiple, uh, multiple different executions of, of the same program with different inputs. So in fact, this notion of relational specification is not at all a new concept uh, to the verification community, given that there has been lots of work in the space of relational program verification, where the goal is to verify a program satisfies a given relational specification. However, it turns out that the problem of, re the problem of relational synthesis, which is the dual of relational verification, has not quite been well, very well explored in the synthesis literature. And in this work, we take the first step towards formalizing and solving this kind of problems. OK, so now let me show you a um, very simple example just to illustrate how relational synthesis works. So imagine uh, we want to implement a base64 encoder as well as its corresponding decoder. And specifically, under this uh, base64 encoding, the uh, strain man should be encoded into another strain, TWFU. And turns out this task can be described using a relational specification, like the one I put here. So um, this is basically a formula that consists of two parts, so two conjuncts. So the conjunct on the um, left-hand side describes the property that any pair of encoder and decoder should always be inverse of each other. And the other conjunct on the other side uh, further constrains the input-output behavior of the desired encoder implementation under this base64 encoding. And given such a specification, the relational synthesis task is to find programs, in this case, a pair of uh, encoder and decoder programs, so that if the programs are plugged back into the formula, the formula is satisfied. And in this work, we propose a novel synthesis technique that is able to take a specification like this of this form and can generate programs, in this case, a tuple of programs that satisfy the given uh, specification. All right, so before I uh, tell you how our technique works in more detail, let me first define the problem a bit more formally and explain to you why this is a challenging problem. So uh, in this work, we think of a, we think of a relational uh, specification as a first-order sentence, where all the variables are universally quantified, and um, and uh, all the uninterpreted un functions are the functions that we, that we want to synthesize for. 
and given a specification, a relational specification with function symbols as well as their corresponding DSLs, the main specific languages, the relational synthesis task is to find um, programs uh, for all the function symbols in their corresponding DSLs such that the relational specification is satisfied. OK, so why is this problem challenging? In particular, why is this problem of relational synthesis hotter than the non-relational uh, synthesis counterpart? Well, this problem, the problem of relational synthesis is harder because in order to solve it, we have to simultaneously search for multiple programs that collectively satisfy a given relational specification. And this makes the overall search space come entirely larger than the search space in the non-relational synthesis problem. So as a result, any naive solution, for example, based on enumeration, will just be too slow to work well. And in order to scale to any complex real-world task, we have to somehow leverage the relational specification in the synthesis process in order to better, in order to better guide the search. OK, so in this work, we propose a novel relational synthesis technique based on relational variance-based learning that is capable of leveraging the relational specification in the synthesis process. So to first give you a bit of context, uh, variance-based learning is a um, technique that has already been used for program synthesis in prior work. And the high-level idea there is to uh, construct a, a data structure, which is called a variance space, that um, compactly represents all the programs that satisfy the given uh, specification. And then the technique will select the program from this version space as the solution to the uh, synthesis problem. However, uh, existing version space learning techniques uh, only consider uh, example-based specification for synthesizing one single program. And in our work, we uh, propose a novel version space learning technique that is able to handle relational specification that could involve multiple different programs. OK, so more specifically, um, our key idea is to use the relational specification to build a data structure, which we call a relational version space, that compactly represents all the two poles of programs that uh, satisfy the relational specification. And in particular, we want to construct the data structure in a compositional way, just following the compositional structure of the relational specification. And once we have this data structure, the uh, synthesis task boils down to selecting a tuple in this version space, in this relational version space, that satisfies the given specification. OK, so more concretely, our approach consists of three steps. So in the first step, given the relational specification, we're going to relax it so that different occurrences of the same function symbol in the original specification will now have different names in the relaxed specification. And this, relax, this relaxation allows us to construct the, uh, the, variance, uh, the relational the data structure in a, in a very modular and clean way. And second, we will uh, construct the variance space just compositionally. And this, this variance space, this relational variance space, is guaranteed to represent exactly the two poles of programs that satisfy the relaxed specification. And finally, we will pick a tuple in this version space that also satisfies the original specification, not just the relaxed specification. And we do this by enforcing that different function names in the relaxed specification that correspond to the same function in the original specification will be assigned the same program. OK, so now let me, let me um, uh, tell you more detail about these uh, three steps one by one, starting with our specification relaxation. All right, so this is actually uh, pretty straightforward. We just give a new name for each uh, occurrence of every function symbol in the original specification, and that gives us a, a relaxed specification. And with such a relaxed specification with no duplicated function names, we're able to construct the version space in a very modular way. And in particular, uh, this construction just follows the compositional structure of the, uh, of the relaxed specification. That is, we will first construct version spaces for smaller subterms in the specification, and then we build version spaces for bigger subterms uh, using the smaller ones. 
ok, here, uh, each little box represents all the candidate programs for the corresponding function symbol in the specification. And all these boxes are glued together in a modular way, just following the uh, compositional structure of the, uh, of the specification. And this gives us a, a unified relational variance space. And this relational variance space represents exactly the, the, the two poles of programs that satisfy the given uh, the uh, relaxed specification. So in more, uh, uh, more specifically, to represent the uh, programs for a function symbol, we use uh, finite tree automata as the representation. That is, the language of the automata defines the set of programs that we want to represent. And this is a method I use a lot in my prior work. And as for representing two poles of programs, we use hierarchical finite tree automata. So the language of this HFTA, this hierarchical finite tree automata, defines all the two poles of programs that we want to represent. And, the, the, and those programs are, are uh, satisfy the, uh, the relaxed specification. And this is a uh, novelty and also a main contribution in this work. All right, so, um, so due, to the, due to the time constraints, I'm going to skip the details here. But uh, please find more details in our paper if you're interested. OK, so now let's move on to the uh, last step, uh, where we want to select a tuple from this variant space that also satisfies the uh, original specification. OK, so it turns out, uh, although we can construct the variant space for the relaxed specification in a pretty modular and clean way, uh, selecting a tuple from this variant space that also satisfies the original specification is not that straightforward. And in particular, this is because not every tuple in this variant space corresponds to a solution, a valid solution for the original specification. And we have to find a particular kind of tuple in this variant space that is functionally consistent. And by functional consistency, I mean the tuple needs to assign the same program to uh, different, uh, different functions, uh, function symbols in, in the relaxed specification that are renamed from the same function in the original specification. So for instance, here, um, for, for, for this case, uh, here, the tup a consistent tuple has to, has to assign the same program to uh, symbols g1, g2, because they are renamed from the same function, g, in the original specification. And our technique employs a backtracking algorithm that searches for a tuple that is uh, both in the variant space as well as um, consistent. And that algorithm gives us a solution to the, uh, to the original synthesis problem. All right, so this is, uh, this is good. Uh, we have looked at a, a relational variance based learning technique that is able to synthesize multiple programs that collectively satisfy a ground relational specification with no variables. So how about variables and quantifiers? Well, in order to handle that, we just put our technique into the CGIS framework as the inductive synthesizer. And the, the CGIS framework will, will basically give us a solution that satisfies any uh, relational specification with quantifiers and variables. And in particular, whenever our uh, inductive synthesizer gives a um, solution, a, a tuple programs that uh, do not satisfy the relational specification, the validation procedure in the CGIS framework will give us a, a counterexample. And in our context, this counterexample is a ground relational uh, specification with no, no variables. And this counterexample will be uh, conjoined with all the previous counterexamples, and that, inf uh, that forces the, the synthesizer, the inductive synthesizer, uh, to produce a, a different uh, solution in the next iteration. And upon termination, the CGIS framework is guaranteed to give us a solution that satisfies the, uh, the uh, given uh, relational specification. OK, so this is everything I have uh, for the technical part of the talk. Now let me, uh, let, let's look at how this technique works in practice. So uh, we have uh, implemented uh, our proposed ideas in a relational synthesis framework, uh, which we call Relish. Uh, in particular, Relish takes uh, as input a relational specification and the corresponding DSLs. And the output of Relish is uh, two-pole programs that uh, satisfy the given relational specification. So uh, in our evaluation, 
we would like to answer two questions. So first, uh, how, uh, how does Relish work in practice for automating real-world relational program synthesis tasks? And to answer this question, we have looked at two application domains, namely uh, synthesis of encoders and decoders and synthesis of comparators. And in our second question, we want to know how Relish compares with a baseline approach for these two application domains. And to answer that, we, uh, we, we picked uh, EU Solver, which is a generic synthesizer that won the general track of the Cygus competition last year as our baseline approach. And in particular, um, this EU Solver is, um, we feed EU Solver the same input as we feed to Relish, but EU Solver perfor performs an enumeration-based uh, search as opposed to the relational variance-based learning in Relish. Okay, so now let's look at the results for these two applications one by one, starting with uh, encoders and decoders. So recall that for any relational synthesis task, we need to provide a relational specification and their corresponding DSLs. And in this case, uh, we, uh, the relational specification consists of a relational property, and in this case, it's the inversion property that any pair of encoder and decoder should always be inverse of each other, as well as some input-output examples that constrain the, uh, the I.O. behavior of the uh, desired programs, in this case, the encoder. And we also designed uh, suitable DSLs that support basic uh, and also common uh, encoding and decoding operations for both encoders and decoders. And we feed this input to both Relish and EU Solver and use them to solve some uh, benchmark problems that we collected from both uh, prior work as well as some other well-known encodings. And our experimental result showed that uh, Relish can, solve, can, su uh, can successfully solve all the benchmarks within uh, under 20 seconds uh, per benchmark on average, whereas EU Solver solves half of them uh, with more than 10 minutes on average. OK, so now, now let's move on to the, um, the second uh, application domain, uh, synthesis of comparators. So in this case, we still provide a relational specification and the, uh, the DSL. Uh, as, as in the previous domain, uh, uh, the uh, relational specification still has two parts, a relational uh, property as well as some I.O. examples. However, in this case, the uh, relational property is a bit more involved uh, than the previous domain because any correct in, uh, compared to implementation needs to satisfy four different properties. And as before, we also designed a suitable DSL that supports some, base, uh, some common comparisons uh, b between strings and integers for this domain. So we, we feed the input to uh, both tools and use, use Relish as well as EU Solver to solve 20 benchmark problems that we collected from Stack Overflow. And our uh, results um, demonstrate that um, Relish can solve more benchmarks in less time. And this, again, shows the advantage of using a relational variance-based learning technique uh, over a baseline enumeration-based technique. OK, so with this, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for your talk. Um, can you help me understanding what the difference between relational synthesis and um, um, uh, syntax-guided synthesis is? Sorry? Syntax-guided synthesis. Oh, um, OK, so syntax-guided synthesis is just, just, just saying you have a grammar that constrains the search space, and, and you can, uh, then, then you can go from there. But relational synthesis still had this syntax but it's, it's, it deals with a specific uh, specification. So basically, r relational synthesis can be thought of as a, a uh, kind of a syntax-guided synthesis, but it's, uh, it's more tailored towards this uh, relational specification. And also, we use a specific uh, kind of technique, but, syn but, but uh, syntax-guided syn synthesis does, doesn't really require that. Other uh, You said when you're trying to synthesize programs, that satisfy the specification, you use a counter-example-driven counter approach. 
uh, and you said that it terminates. So uh, that it, you guarantee that it terminates. I'm not sure how exactly uh, oh, it uh, will, because you, they have like you have like infinite specifications. Right. right. Okay. So the only part that you that we use counterexample is in the CGIS framework. Uh, so our inductive synthesizer, based on relational version space, doesn't use counterexample, but it, it uses the counterexample pr produced by CGIS as the uh, the input uh, uh, specification. So the CGIS framework, uh, the loop, uh, I, I don't think it guarantees termination. We're just saying upon termination, when it terminates, it, it's guaranteed that the solution is a correct solution. Uh, does the synthesizer work on uh, some intermediate language representation or on DSL that you define uh, those functions for? So, sorry. Uh, so the synthesizer, does it work on some intermediate language or on the DSL that you define for the particular right. domain? So it works directly on the DSL that we define. Thanks. Very nice work. Um, can you say a little bit about how much of this technique would generalize beyond using FTAs for synthesis? If I wanted to use the same, if I had the same relational problem, but for a constraint-based synthesizer or a stochastic one, how much of the technique could I reuse? Yeah, so excellent question. So uh, here we are only, so our te uh, technically speaking, our, our technique is based on uh, FTA, but, uh, uh, but you can still take this kind of relational specification and use other techniques. For example, you can do uh, enumeration, but I think the big challenge there is how do you use uh, this relational specification to prune the search space, like in the uh, example-based specification, you can use that to prune, you know, to reject partial programs. How do you have a similar thing here? And also for this uh, statistical thing, I think a uh, similar, similar thing happens here. Any final question? The gentleman in the back. Hi. Um, nice talk. Um, maybe I missed this, but w what's the criteria you use? So if you have multiple programs that meet the spec, what, what's your criteria for, what's your bias? What are you choosing for the right one? Oh, okay, right. Oh, okay. So the question is how, how do you pick the, uh, a good program, basically? How, how do you, how do you uh, uh, put, uh, how do you design the induct bias in the synthesizer? So uh, basically that, that boils down to how, uh, the problem, how, how, how to define a, a scoring function when you pick the programs from the version space. And we, we don't really, um, so this work is not about that, but, we, uh, but in our technique, we use a very basic um, technique that prefers uh, programs of sh uh, smaller size, basically. With that, thank you very much.